What if the pickings are so slim that you start doubting your standards? And why did your ex block you? Welcome to Ask Mark. It's week number 58 and we are here from beautiful New York. We found ourselves a diner. Uh, you might know where it is. And <laughs> we have Jameer here. Yes, well, I have to be here, here yeah. for another episode of Ask Mark. Yeehaw, we we got go. some good questions today, so let's get straight into it. So the first question is from Dish, and Dish literally says what we said in the intro, mm. which was, what if the pickings are so slim that you start doubting your standards? So we've been doing a lot of one-on-ones here in New York. I've been coaching a lot of clients, and I said, well, what would I say if a client came to me, if you came to me mm. and asked me this question? The first thing I noticed is there's two parts to this question. Yes. There's the, what if the slim, what if the pickings are slim? Yeah. And then there's the, what if I'm doubting my standards now? So if a client comes to me and says, well, slim pickings, Mark, there's not, there's not much around here. I'm likely going to challenge her on that. And I challenge you on it as well. I would say to her, well, how are you finding your pickings right now? Mm. How are you meeting men? How are you, how are you making those types and quality of men come into your life? Mm. Because it's easy to say. Yeah. The pickings oh, are slim. there's no one here. Right. And it's a lot harder to actually take ownership of the fact that you are in control of the amount of people that you have kind of flowing through your life. And of course, the quality exactly. of people that you have coming into your life. So I'd really encourage a client to take responsibility for the quality of men. And I work a lot with clients with this. And it is a challenge for some clients because some of them have chocked up lifestyles and it's not leaving a lot of room to do new things that bring quality men into their lives. Yeah. But that's still their responsibility. Unless you've met every single man in your town or city, or most of them, I don't let a client come to me, and I wouldn't let you come to me, saying the pickings are slim. I'd say, what's the strategy you're using? Second part of the question is really interesting, mm. because it's, what if, what if I'm doubting my standards? Mm. What if I'm not sure if I'm being too picky? First thing I'd say is, well, you want to check in on your standards and yeah. ask the classic, are, are they superficial, mm. or are they the deep values that I really want? Yeah. So, you know, are you asking yourself, like, is this person compatible with me because they have a great sense of humor? They're a good communicator. Or they're, are they're you health saying... health conscious or something. Yeah, they're yeah. health conscious. Or are you saying, oh, no, they've got to be a six foot tall doctor. Right. <laughs> so you can ask, you can perhaps ask your friends, you can ask for someone who's outside of your circle to kind of give you an outside perspective on that. And, mm. and this is something I obviously work through with clients is, well, are these standards or is this more us being picky? Mm. I would also go even further... And the second thing I'd say with the standards question is, how are you assessing your standards? Are you giving men the opportunity to show themselves to these deeper levels of standards or are they being ruled out on a very superficial basis, perhaps based on much more physical or yeah. instant type traits? Yeah. Hmm. Anything to add to that? No, good answer. Happy days. I'm on board with it. Let's go to the second question. I'm glad you're on board with it. Yes. It pleases me that you're on board. <laughs> second question is from... Oh, I have my hand up. Continuation, it's important. Continuity, that's what it's called. Second question is from <laughs> Sana Sim. Hey Mark, I have a question. My ex has blocked me on Instagram two months after our breakup, but we are still friends on Facebook, although we don't chat. Honestly, I'm still not over him and I got hurt by him blocking me after a long time. I really need to know why guys do this, please. It was interesting, because we were chatting about this before. Mm. And... I think we've all experienced this. We've all had an ex block us at some point, take us offline. Yeah. And it comes from a place of hurt, kind of, from them. Um, generally speaking, you know, it's, it's hard. Breakups are hard, and everyone deals with them in different ways and process them, processes them in different ways. So for some people, that means, you know, you need to completely remove yourself from that. And for Instagram, being the media that it is, with so much visual kind of aspect to it, he's seeing you living your life day in, day out, probably not really worrying too much about him, and that's hard, and that hurts. So he's got to then take a step back to be like, look, I can't handle this, and he's blocked you, which is totally understandable. With Facebook, because you can unfollow someone as well, there's every chance that he's kind of unfollowed your post on Facebook as well, because he can't quite deal with, you know, continually seeing that. Um, but he hasn't gone as far as blocking you or deleting your Facebook because, you know, you've got history, you've got that connection. So, you know. Yeah, I think he nailed it. And I found that the difference between Instagram and, and Facebook is an important one. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's sad. I think it's sad that, you know, we do sometimes lose our exes and we, and we block and remove each other from our lives. Yeah. But as Jamia says, sometimes it's necessary. So your ex is being driven by pain. Now, 
likely that could be a pain of seeing you moving on and he could be missing you. He knows things aren't right. So he says, nope, I'm blocking that. Yeah. You know, I've never blocked an ex, but I've certainly unfollowed. I've certainly removed, you know, all the instant stuff and made the thing much more distant. So yeah. I can totally resonate. Uh, if things went really badly, you know, and if the relationship ended on a massive downer, he could, it could be a different type of pain for him. Yeah. It could be, he just, I don't want the pain of dealing with her. It, if, if things have gone downhill, it could certainly be that too. Mm. But we do know it's coming from some sort of pain. There's some sort of pain from him seeing those images that he doesn't want in his life. Mm. Um, yeah, no, I can actually relate to, to you here, Sana, because I had a personal experience. We were actually at Universal Studios Hollywood the other day. It was an amazing day. Was amazing. And I was scrolling through and randomly noticed that a woman I used to date had removed me. Oh. And yeah, and, and I was surprised because things ended brilliantly. It was only short. It was a couple of months. We only dated casually, but things ended brilliantly, really, really positive and well. And I said to Jamia, I said, oh, she, she blocked me. I'm a bit, or just un, unfriended, I think it was. Yeah. And I was a bit surprised. And yeah, it's, it can be, I can resonate with you, Sana, but they do it not necessarily because they hate you or because they're angry. Sometimes yeah. it could be just because they're in that pain of missing you. Yeah. And, and you have to respect that. I have to respect that. We all have to respect that. Yeah. People kind of follow their own journey and they, they do what they need to do or what they think that they need to do to either heal or move on or whatever it is that they're seeking. They just kind of go about their own way yeah. of doing that. Yeah. Unfortunately, be, it might hurt. <laughs> be grateful for having him in your life. And certainly we can all be grateful for having our previous partners. Yeah. Um, even if things didn't go well, they still provide an important lesson and some great experiences. Yeah. And you never know, down the track, things might get better and you'll be able to talk again once he's kind of had that time to remove himself and, and calm himself. And, yeah, I think yeah. it's super beautiful when you can do that and things can come full circle and you yeah. guys can have a, a cup of coffee and laugh about it. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully that goes well for you, Sana. Yeah. Pretty thorough there. Last <laughs> question is from Tenderly and it's giant, but I like the question, so Good. bear with us. <laughs> Tenderly says, Good advice. So I recently rekindled with an old flame. It's been three years since we've been together and I'm out of the country on business and we've been talking a lot. He's been very open and vulnerable to me, as have I him. And we made a vacation plan that was set to start upon my return. It's in our busy calendars where we plan and go and do all that stuff. Uh, but keep in mind, we've yet to have the chance to meet again in person. Ooh. All just phone communication, completely different time zones. I got a business offer that would make me work on the day we're set to leave, uh, which we'd still have the eve and two whole days. I reached out and ask, asked him uh, what he thought of us both working that day and said that I don't have to take the gig, I just wanted some input. Also, with the new info of me returning sooner. His response was, you do what you got to do. Uh, I immediately knew he wasn't stoked and I messed up and I had no response to his comment. So 16 hours later, he sent me a bunch of question marks. Uh, you've tried to play it cool and say, honey, did I miss a text? It's all backfired basically. And you've said, hey, I messed up. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I appreciate, I shouldn't have even asked. I appreciate he was making time for me and I want to keep the plans we had set. Now he's pulling away uh, and saying, I'm overthinking things. Do I send the text? I feel some confusion on your end. I'm going to give you some space. I don't want to get closer to someone who isn't sure of what they want. Um, or do I just wait it out? Okay. Bit of a mouthful there. Yeah, definitely a lot taken. A lot <laughs> Essentially, <of questions. laughs> she's gone away. X has rekindled long distance. Yep. And they've had some confusion over text because they booked a holiday. She's then sort of half cancelled. He's been a bit offended. She's handled it a little bit awkwardly. Yeah. What's the best piece of advice here? Well, we need to kind of establish how long... Or like, you know, what the kind of relationship was beforehand. So, you know, if it's an ex, it's a little bit different to someone you just kind of casually saw. Um, yeah, we don't know if this old flame is someone you spent one night with, one month with, and it was kind of this not the right time thing, yeah. or one year with, and you guys actually traveled the journey and, uh, yeah. you know, kind of came to a conclusion. Yeah, because it's definitely, um, it's a big step to kind of plan a holiday with someone straight oh, away when you haven't you know, actually met up in person again yet. Cause that's like three time. days or, you know, it could be two and a, two nights, um, of nonstop time together. And that's, that's a big commitment. <laughs> that's a big commitment. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I could potentially see it if it was someone who you maybe had this sort of short term, you know, a couple of months, things just weren't right at the time. You guys ended on real good terms cause of timing yeah. maybe. 
Yeah. But it's just possible. a full on commitment. Yeah, as you it say. is a big step. The other thing you haven't really described here, Tanner, is how important this job is. Mm. And I'm not sure if this is a huge opportunity for you or if this is just some random shift that you took. Yeah. And that would change my opinion here as well. Yeah, as to whether or not that is more important. So if you kind of were to look back at this moment in five years time and go, oh, I really should have taken that job and done that. Or if you go, I really should have just gone on the holiday. So that's the kind of weight you need to give the situation and as to yeah. how important that is compared to the holiday as well. Yep. All right, so Tanner, what to do now? We want to get him on the phone. Yep. Get him on the phone, clear the air. I know he's pulling away. But this doesn't have to be a needy vibe. This isn't yeah. you calling up wanting attention. Yeah. I'd give him a call yeah. if he doesn't pick up. Yeah, if he doesn't pick up, you can still just leave a voicemail. Leave a voicemail. Yeah. Be cool. Like, you don't have to... Like, uh, the most important part... Most important part here, sorry, is to not come across as needy. You don't want to be calling him going like, Hey, like, I'm really, really sorry. Like, I, I, I messed up and I want to fix this. And, mm. you know, like, how can I make this better? Like, that's not your vibe at all. You may... What you want to do is you want to get clarification as to what's going on. You want to see where his head's at, kind of work out a plan together from this point as to what you want to do now yeah. for the holiday, for continuing talking, whatever it is that you want to do. Yeah. So, yeah, leave a voicemail. It, you know, it has just short and sweet. doesn't have to be like rambling on. Hey, really just want to get in contact just to see where your head's at. I know things are a bit weird at the moment. I just want to clear the air. All right, talk to you soon. Yeah. Yep. Hey, just want to get clear on where we're at, exactly as Jamia said, yep. and that way you guys can chat about it properly, not over Messenger, and sort all this out. Yeah, um, that's if he doesn't answer, like leaving the voicemail, otherwise just talk it out. You know, be level-headed, don't be like upset or don't feel like you're taking all the blame. Just acknowledge what's going on and then just kind of be like, alright, cool, this has happened, how do we fix this? Yeah, make sure you decide before you do that on the importance of the job, because yep. you've got to be clear on that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Great questions. Very, very good Brewing questions, questions this Love week. Yeah. Thank you for sending them in. Leave yours below. Comments, questions, etc. Don't forget you can find Jamia in the Facebook group and myself as well. So join that Facebook group. We've got over a thousand members in there. It's a bustling community. It's super, super beautiful. Very mm -hmm. supportive. So come and join us in there. Uh, hit the like button as well. Big red subscribe button with, with the little, the little bell. bell. And leave your comment, as I said, below. Thank you for joining us from beautiful New York. Yeah. Loving this city. And we will see you next week. Go. I bumped it. I did bump it. Wait, how'd you bump it? How are you sitting here? I got really excited with the candy bar. <laughs> Peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> with that exact sound. Of <laughs> Get him on the phone, basically. I just, we were just like, give him a ring. <laughs> Welcome to Ask Mark. It's week number 59, 58. It's week number 58 and we're here for... Oh, damn it. <laughs> you always make me